much, and thank you for listening as I tell you about my proposal for incorporating stakeholder engagement into Wynn Resorts' corporate strategy. Wynn Resorts was founded in Las Vegas, Nevada in 2002 by CEO Stephen Wynn. And obviously, the Las Vegas gaming market is extraordinarily well established. It has been um, in presence, I guess, uh, since 1931. But Wynn has since expanded into new, relatively unstable and volatile new markets of the People's Republic of China, known as Macau, and Everett, Massachusetts. And Macau is the largest global gaming industry uh, with a revenue of 44.1 billion US dollars in 2014. The gaming industry is very unique and that is reliant on government approval for continued operation. Politicians, regulators, and governments have extraordinary leverage over casinos related to initial issuance and continued approval of gaming licenses. Casinos must form and maintain a mutually beneficial relationship with government entities so that they can directly influence its performance markets while investing in economic, social, and human capital within these market communities. Wynn Resorts is currently at a very significant pivoting point in this corporation history where political influence and government control over business operations has been a negative impact causing a dramatic 79% decrease in Wynn Resort stock value over the past 16 months, really driving a need for a proactive strategic planning change to mitigate reputational damage. Wynn Resort's really primary vision and core values center around investment in human capital and establishing its employee-based structure. So it really funds a lot of employee education, skill development, and career advancement opportunities for its employees. Uh, it, it really encourages a lot of sense of pride of family and camaraderie and celebrates positive accomplishments, but also personal ownership and accountability of negative behavior. Um, as part of its uh, business code of conduct and ethics, it encourages integrity and ethical behavior in hopes to really create a healthy and safe environment for employees, their families, as well as the surrounding community. Uh, one thing that Wynn really desperately needs is a primary mission statement. Um, that's what a lot of forward-thinking uh, sustainable companies have. And really, Wynn could define its core strategy for achieving financial, human, and social capital improvements, and it would really assist with the integration of sustainability and creation and prioritization of sustainability goals. So by utilizing the statement, when Resorts is committed to providing a luxury environment for our guests while reducing environmental impact, promoting sustainable development, educating our workforce, and supporting our local community and government, Wynn could ultimately ensure that its goals are created appropriately and linked to its corporate strategy. All of Wynn governance documentation really centers around providing financial guidance for the business. The corporate governance guidelines uh, provides criteria for board of director membership election, committee membership, meeting frequency, compensation, and the role of directors in evaluating CEO performance. The Wynn Resort bylaws define rights of stockholders, meeting scheduling, and stockholder voting rights. The Code of Business Conduct and Ethics really promotes equal opportunity and diversity, and it defines that harassment and discrimination will not be tolerated, but it does not define the consequence of noncompliance. The Code of Conduct provides very high-level guidance to employees regarding situational occurrences, but it can be really easily misunderstood or intentionally translated in different ways to allow for escape of violation. Really, the code requires that employees interpret words like customary and reasonable when determining whether to even accept monetary gifts, rather than simply saying that gifts can be not accepted and it's against policy. If Wynn Resorts wants to fully integrate their commitment to ethical conduct and integrity, they need to rewrite their code of conduct and allow for no variability in translation. 
brief uh, CSR reports were issued in 2013 and 2014 that really only included lagging indicators of social and environmental accomplishments. And they were very completely independent of business strategy goals or targets. And a lot of WINS environmental and social initi initiatives that you can kind of see here in this chart are a lot of times separate silos that are often independent of business and financial performance and often closed once they are completed. As the CEO, it is Steve WINS absolute responsibility to push these initiatives from the top down and really integrate social and environmental requirements into the company governance structure and really balance the importance of these three sustainability pillars equally, um, including economic, environmental, social, rather than just heavily weighted on financial. It is really obvious here that by some of uh, recent elevations of secondary stakeholders to primary level, mainly those of in political in nature and government in nature, that WIN really needs um, a method to engage stakeholders because currently they do not have an engagement policy or an engagement strategy. So rather than respond to critical issues in a reactionary way, WIN must really proactively determine the best strategy to turn political and potential business risks into opportunities. So by incorporating and integrating the accountability principles of materiality, inclusivity, and responsiveness into their new engagement policy, they can elevate material concerns of stakeholders to the same importance level as the organization, they can include stakeholders into corporate decisions, and respond quickly to their concerns to build a relationship established on trust. Utilizing the continuous loop of input is really necessary, and then engagement is followed by a willingness to act on that information received. So ultimately, WIN is really investing a significant amount of resources in their employees through training and education to ensure that they can improve the cost premium experience, but really they should be leveraging this invaluable human capital resource to be a direct liaison between even the corporation and customers, or even the corporation and other stakeholders like government officials, really to facilitate this development of a long-term relationship. So Wind Resorts does have environmental preservation as one of its material assessments, and uh, they did incorporate a Go Green program initiative to increase recycling, composting, LED replacement, uh, reduce water consumption, um, and selectively purchase eco-friendly supply chain products. Um, however, I was not surprised to see, ultimately, when benchmarked against a more aggressive um, other industry competitor like the Sands uh, Las Vegas Corporation, that when compared um, against them per square foot from a resource usage standpoint, they were drastically still using much more greater amounts of resources, including energy emissions and water usage. Um, again, the program faults here are that the environmental initiatives are not linked to corporate strategy. They're separate silos that are often uh, closed once they are completed. And really, these initiatives are very small scale for a Fortune 500 company. And what you can see here is that it really had minimal impact when assessed per square foot. Really, at this stage, WIN needs to be setting uh, appropriate large-scale targets for a Fortune 500 company. So, in other words, greenhouse gas emission reductions, large-scale recycling efforts, major reductions as far as energy consumption and water reduction targets. They really need to be incorporating these into all sectors. So, in other words, construction and supply chain, those were not reported as part of their Go Green initiatives previously. Um, they also really need to be engaging their stakeholders to identify what the material issues are that are relevant to the communities that they currently reside in. Um, one of the things that I thought that was very interesting is that a lot of the host communities that they currently reside in, so say for example Las Vegas and Macau, 
um, both experience extreme uh, significant water shortages, yet Wynn Resorts continues to maintain extravagant fountains, uh, landscaping, golf courses, um, million flower atriums that require significant water supply, and obviously water conservation is of great relevance to stakeholders, and so therefore really, Wynn must really initiate a long-term reduction strategy with quantitative percentage targets set annually, giving the highest priority to these water-stressed communities. And ultimately, routine meetings between WIN officials and the community will really provide WIN with a, an opportunity to um, understand what stakeholders need and get continual feedback and for them to also to transparently communicate information relative to their concerns. WIN, again, is, is very um, skilled at looking internally to focus on what its own employees need. So say, for example, diversity, um, aggressive campaigns to increase uh, minority employment, um, educational campaigns, career development, and that type of thing. Um, but again, they fail dramatically um, in looking externally to find out what their stakeholders need externally and also what their communities desperately need in relation to where they reside. Wind Resorts is severely dependent on the Macau gaming community for uh, virtually three quarters of its revenue. Um, but on the flip side also too, uh, Macau is also severely dependent on the gaming casinos for their own livelihood in that 80% of their revenue comes from gaming taxes um, that are generated from casinos. And so essentially these two relationships are very interdependent on each other. Um, but recently, uh, unethical behavior uh, caused by some internal casino operations really triggered um, a Chinese anti-corruption campaign by the government. And so um, the casinos really need to look externally to find out how they can assist these communities in, in better diversifying and perhaps even separating themselves from this anti-corruption. So questionable ties to the Chinese lending market, unethical practices, and rough collection of bad gaming debts um, by what they call junket operators led to the Chinese government crackdown on corruption. And really it led to increased monitoring, camera surveillance, um, gambling table limitations, and it's a huge potential business risk for win casinos. So ultimately, what they really need to do is increase radical transparency and disclosure of their information to, again, gain trust of the Chinese government. Um, they potentially need to launch their own internal anti-corruption campaign and to demonstrate the corporation's compliance and responsiveness to the Chinese government demands. Um, but also, too, I think that they routinely need to engage the Chinese government, um, both individually but as well as collaboratively with industry competitors. Um, so that will essentially enable Wind Resorts to communicate campaign progress and really modify their goals accordingly based on feedback that they receive from uh, the Chinese government. But ultimately, if it means that CEO Steve Wynn needs to sever ties with these junket operators as a trade-off, he ultimately will need to make that decision um, if it means the, the continued success of the Wynn Resorts, because ultimately it will mean a reduced business risk and increased stakeholder trust. Wynn frequently does make um, significant economic investment in local communities and um, the, the surrounding areas in which um, it resides. So a lot of art and cultural donations are frequently made. Um, most recently, the University of Macau Development Foundation um, is just recently received a 37 million US dollar donation to expand its Academy of Economics and Management. And ultimately, that will provide WIN employees in the surrounding community of Macau um, to receive academic education and career advancement and professional and development skills. And obviously, with um, creation of new casinos, uh, specifically here in Massachusetts, will generate a, a enormous number of new jobs, um, but also to purchasing from local vendors, in addition to revenue for the local government as well. 
So obviously, investment in art and culture and whatnot is very necessary for community development. Um, but really, I think what Wynn needs to consider from a materiality standpoint is what is truly important as far as investment in their employees. Um, one of the things that Wynn needs to really think about when it's looking at 64% of its workforce, and meaning that 64% of its workforce are considered minorities, is that following the 2007 subprime housing loan economic crash, that over 8% of black and Latino families lost their homes to foreclosures. Now, I understand that um, investment in culture and, and art is very important, but also, too, perhaps investment of, in low interest loans, in child care, in transportation, and in health care access, that's really investing in Wynn's core values of providing a safe and stable and family-oriented environment for their employees. Regarding the concept of how Wynn can assist the Macau community with busy, business diversification, um, really, they need to engage both the community and the Chinese government to identify their concerns, but also include the community and the officials in the decision-making process, also, in, as well as identify the action plan with a timeline. Because really, to increase the business diversity, increase um, Macau economic stability, but then also increase stakeholder trust, will really ultimately is a shared value between um, increasing the resiliency of wind resorts, but then also the resiliency of the community in which it resides. So Wynn's primary strategy is to strengthen its employee base and retain valuable human capital that it has invested in. Ultimately, they want to provide a safe environment where employees feel qualified to perform their best work. As seen from this materiality assessment, the company has identified internal organization material issues, but has not incorporated many of these prioritized issues into their strategy or developed relevant goals to promote continued improvement. Wynn has to complete this materiality assessment following engagement of external stakeholders. Additional issues important to external stakeholders like anti-corruption, non-disclosure, and community independence has to be incorporated into its long-term strategy. Identified business risk could be reduced or eliminated if Wynn incorporates engagement into their routine practices. And when it must ultimately develop goals to align its corporate strategy based on the material issues and desired achievement. Identified goals must by, be prioritized according to value, threat of non-implementation, environmental and or so societal impact, and potential opportunity. CEO Steve Wynn has to be held accountable for managing strategic planning. Current corporate management systems of WIN really focus on governance functionality and regulatory compliance and primarily financial organizational structure. Um, there really is no sustainability officer or committee designated to um, internal structures uh, related to sustainability. And um, for the most part, uh, performance ratings are not linked to environmental or social metrics for CEO Steve Wynn or any executive management staff. A designated committee led by a senior level executive must oversee Wynn's strategic planning, responsibilities, targets, performance metrics, and policy effectiveness for their sustainability program. A working group consisting of internal managers, supervisors, and uh, designated employees, if they so want to um, volunteer, must collaborate with the sustainability officer and commit to integrating the sustainability strategy into their teams while tracking program achievement. Benchmarking wind resorts against um, other corporations and, and industry competitors like the SANS, which is has much more aggressive um, program like corporate citizenship um, is a great method to incentivize when to continually improve performance, identify potential unknown risks, and increase competitive advantage. 
This is just a brief uh, example of metrics and uh, goals and targets that WIN could incorporate into their program. In the past, they've only reported uh, essentially lagging performance indicators in any of their CSR reports. Whereas going forward, they should really incorporate uh, both quantitative and qualitative goals and targets into their um, reporting for their CSR reports. Um, really from a, a quantitative standpoint, they should set standards and goals as far as um, reduction amounts by percentages and set timelines to achieve those goals. Regarding qualitative goals like transparency, they could improve the corporate transparency by engagement of stakeholders and um, aim to complete that by a certain timeline for their materiality assessment. Regarding accountability, sustainability target goals must be linked to annual performance ratings for those employees, managers, executives, and Stephen Wynn who are directly responsible for completing sustainability initiatives and programs. All CSR reports should contain a minimum of three years of trended data for relevance, and all previous versions of reports should be made available for public access in company archives. Greater insurance of transparency and credibility of reported data is gained if a third-party auditor reviews data for accuracy. WIN's overall integration of increased transparency and stakeholder engagement strategy will, over the long term, enable the government and community to develop trust in the gaming industry, but specifically in WIN resorts will reduce, hopefully, stockholder anxiety of potential wrongdoing and corruption, increase respect and trust, a mutual respect and trust between the government and wind resorts, and reduce risk of legal litigation and gaming license revocation. But really, the whole concept here is that this, this increased transparency and stakeholder engagement really needs to be a concept of the, the continuous loop. So in other words, it can't be just a reactive strategy. It has to be a proactive strategy so that stakeholder input is necessary to continually identify key issues and that stakeholder engagement is continually followed by a willingness to act on information received. Thank you very much for listening.